Okay, um, what I want to do next is uh, I, I want to review the graphs of the trig functions because we are going to need them now. Um, so I'm going to start with the sine function and then show you the graphs of the other ones. And you, you, you have to remember this uh, graphs, okay? Um, so um, let's start with the graph. So let's say I want to know the graph of the sine function. So uh, let me say e example, um, sketch. Sketch the uh, graph of sketch the graph of uh, the sine function. Now, the the sine function is periodic with period two, right? The sine fu sorry period two pi, because um, if I have sine of, so recall the following, sine of theta plus 2 pi or minus 2 pi is the same as sine theta. So this is why we say the sine is uh, periodic with period 2 pi. So it means that in terms of graph, if I know the graph of sine between 0 and 2 pi, if I know the graph of sine between 0 and 2 pi, I know the graph of sine everywhere because all I have to do is repeat that in both directions, okay? Repeat that in both directions. So, uh, so uh, first of all, let me remind you that Let's say this is a circle, this is the unit circle. Um, so this is the unit circle, and remember, for any angle, for any angle x, uh, the point, the coordinates of this point is given by what? The first coordinate of this point is cosine x, the second coordinate is what? Sine x. So because sine x represents the second coordinate, uh, sine x represents the second coordinate of the point on the unit circle, so then sine x, uh, the value of sine x is always between negative 1 and 1. Okay. Um, now, I am going to show you the behavior of the sine function in terms of wh where the sine function increases, where the value of the sine function decreases. Okay. So I'm going to make a picture here for the sine function. Let's say I have the uh, 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 let's say this is here is zero. This is here 2 pi, so in the middle here I'm going to have pi, right? Right here I'm going to have the number pi over 2. Right here I'm going to have the number 3 pi over 2. Now notice, what is the value of sine? What's the value of sine x when x is 0? Zero? 0. What's the value of sine x when x is pi over 2? 1. So what's happening between 0 and pi over 2? Remember I have the circle and um, the value... Notice that when x is the angle 0, the, the point is... What point do I get? 1, 0, right? So sine 0 is 0. And then as, as you increase the angle from 0 up to pi over 2, the value of sine is increasing, right? Because the value of sine represents that, this vertical's length, right? So as you, increase the, as you increase the angle from 0 to pi over 2, the value of sine is increasing from 0 to 1, okay? 
So it, it, it increases from 0 to 1. Okay? Now, as, uh, as you go from now pi over 2 to pi, then what's happening? It decreases to what? 0, because now uh, when, when sine pi is 0. What is happening from pi to 3 pi over 2? Even decreasing from 0 to negative 1. So this is negative 1 here, and it's decreasing up to negative 1. And then between 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi, it goes back up to 0. Everybody's okay? So that's the behavior of the sine function. So I'm going to use that to draw the graph of this sine function. You guys are done writing this down? Okay. I need space, so I'm going to get rid of that. Um, let's try to draw the graph of sine function. Um, Okay, uh, let's say um, I need to pick a height for, okay, let's pick this to this height to be 1, okay? So I'm going to pick 1, 2, and 3. Uh, pi is about 3, right? 3.14, uh, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So I'm going to say that my pi is about here and 2 pi is about here. Okay, what's the value of uh, so we know that the value of sine at 0 is 0, right? The value of sine at pi is what? Z 0. The value of sine at 2 pi is 0. Okay, what's the value of sine at pi? This is where pi over 2 is, right? This is where pi over 2 is. What's the value of sine at pi over 2? 1. What's the value of sine at 3 pi over 2? Negative 1. Okay, so the graph looks like The graph of sine between 0 and 2 pi looks like this, and which makes sense with our, uh, with our uh, investigation that sine increases from 0 up to 1, right? And then it decreases to 0 up to pi. And then after pi, it's decreasing to negative 1. And then it's increasing from negative 1 to 0, right? So it matches that. Now, this is the graph between 0 and 2 pi, but what's the graph between, uh, what's the graph between uh, everywhere? Well, you repeat this, um, you, you repeat this uh, in both directions, okay? So, uh, let me try to do that. Maybe right up here. What's that? Oh, this is on the other side, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so this would be like this and then okay and also it's going to repeat repeat right here. Okay. is everybody okay so you take uh, you take the part that you have between 0 and 2 pi you shift it right here okay you all you're doing you're shifting it right here you're not reflecting it you're not reflecting it. It's important. It's not, you're, not, you're shifting it to uh, by. You're shifting it by to the left by two pi units. Yeah. And this is where plus or minus two pi is the same thing, right? The same yeah, yeah. Because the, it's periodic between the two pi. That's why you do that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that's the graph of sine. Uh, can someone tell me though what's the graph of cosine? Yeah, so uh, let me just say a couple of things here. Uh, 
Red means I'm th thinking about cosine, okay? So what is happening to cosine of x? Uh, cosine of x represents uh, cosine of x represents the first coordinate of the uh, of the uh, point which is the intersection of the terminal side of the angle and the circle, right? So what is cosine of zero? Cosine of zero is one. And then on the circle, cosine zero represents which length? Cosine zero represents this length here, right? So when the angle is, when the angle is zero, when the angle is zero, cosine x is one. And then as the angle goes up to pi over two, this length is shrinking to zero, right? Okay, what is happening between pi over two and pi? This length is increasing in the negative direction, right? So it's, it's going from zero to negative one. And so if you do that, what you're gonna get is you're gonna getting one here and then the cosine value you set is zero here, right? So uh, it decreases up to zero. And then what's the cosine value at pi? Negative one, so that means it's decreasing even more, right? And then uh, between negative one and three pi over two, it goes up to zero. And then here it goes up to what? One. So use that to come up with the graph. So cosine zero is what? Cosine zero is one, sorry, right here. Okay, let me. A cosine zero is one, this red dot. And cosine of pi over two? Zero. And cosine of, um, cosine of pi? Cosine of pi is negative one. Cosine of three pi over two? Zero, cosine of two pi? One, right? So what, what am I getting? And here, what's gonna happen? At negative pi over two, it'll be zero. Okay, and then it's coming to this point here. Is that making sense? Um, again, it's going to it's going to be extend it's going to extend in both two directions. Okay, so the red one is cosine x. Uh, the green one is uh, sine x. The green one is sine x. Everybody understands the uh, graphs of these two uh, functions. Is that okay? Um, all right. Uh, now, let's answer a couple of questions. What, if I ask you, what's the limit of sine x as x goes to zero? What did you say? What's the limit of sine x as x goes to zero? What's that? Zero, right? What's the limit of uh, cosine x as x goes to three pi over two? Zero. What's the limit of sine x as x goes to three pi over two? Negative one, okay? So if you know this graph, you can answer the limits about these two functions very easily. Uh, right now, now, what I'm going to do is uh, I am going to show you how to obtain uh, the graph of secant x, okay? And for that, I am going to delete my sine function, okay? So, which is a little bit depressing, but uh, you know what? I'm going to make the graph of cosine once again, okay? And, and show you how to obtain the graph of secant, okay? So here's a uh, here is my x-axis and here is my y-axis. Here is um, what I get. 
Okay, uh, I think we were getting uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, and six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, so the graph of uh, cosine, uh, this is where pi is for me, this is where 2 pi is for me. And this is in the middle, right here, would be pi over 2. So right here would be pi over 2. So I am ha I'm going to get something like this here. And at pi, the value is negative 1. And where is 3 pi over 2? 3 pi over 2 is right here. And at 2 pi, the value is 1 again, right? So that's how it looks like there. Uh, what's happening here? Uh, I have to see where 1, 2, 3, so the negative pi is right here, so I go up to this point, and um, where is 3 pi over 2 would be right here, and this is how it looks like, right? So let me label the points again. Um, this is uh, this is three pi over two right here. Um, this is zero. This is negative pi over two. This is a uh, pi, uh, negative pi. This point here is negative three pi over two. This point here is t uh, negative two pi. Everybody's okay with that? This is the graph of cosine. So this is the graph of, co oops, this is the graph of cosine x. Now, I, I need to, I want to draw the graph of secant, right? Uh, notice that, what is secant? Secant is 1 over cosine, right? So let me use green here, so uh, I want to draw the graph of secant. Uh, and secant I know is 1 over cosine. Not reflection. Not reflection. Uh, not reflection. So notice that whenever x is a multiple of odd multiple of pi over 2, cosine is 0, right? So at pi over 2, cosine is 0, right? At negative pi over 2, cosine is 0. So then I am. Uh, it, for secant, I have to divide 1 by 0, right? What does it tell you? Well, it tells me that, uh, that the value of secant would be very big near those points, right? So if I make, um, if I make a line here, so this would be vertical asymptotes. This would be vertical asymptotes for secant. My scales are obviously bad, but we're going to work with that. So the secant, what's the value of secant when x is 0? When x is 0, what's the value of secant? 1. So I get the point right here. But then when x is, when, when x is near, so when x is near pi over 2, cosine x is near 0, right? <coughs> but positive. Cosine, when x is near pi over 2 on the left, when x is near pi over 2 on the left, cosine x is near 0 but positive, so that the value of the secant will blow up to infinity right here. Same thing happens when x is close to negative pi over 2 on the right side of pi over 2. Looks like a parabola, yeah, but it's not quite, yeah. Um, okay, so what's happening uh, what's happening then, okay, what's going to happen, uh, let me, 
what's going to happen here and and here what's going to happen what's the what's the graph of secant in here well secant of pi would be what secant of pi would be negative 1 as well right and then the graph when x is close to pi over 2 on the right side of pi over 2 now cosine is 0 but negative so now you get this okay and you keep doing that we you keep doing that for all the other intervals okay am i uh, making sense is everybody okay with that was that yeah so what i'm saying here first of all when when x is when x is close to pi over 2 on the right side of pi over 2 what's the value of cosine when when see cosine when x is when x is close to pi over 2 cosine is close to 0 so 1 over cosine will be big because you're dividing 1 by a very small number so when x is close to 0 cosine x is close to 0 so 1 over cosine would be big okay same thing happens here when x is close to negative pi over 2 on the right side of negative pi over 2 the cosine x is close to 0 so 1 over cosine would be big okay uh, and similarly same thing is happening here okay this is the graph the green one is the graph of secant of course I didn't draw the entire graph you have to repeat this everywhere now usually usually you need to know usually it's enough to know the graph of secant between negative pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 okay for most of the purpose for most purposes say it again Oh, so now what, what would be the graph of secant between negative pi over 2 and negative 3 pi over 2? It would be like this. Okay? Now, let's answer a couple of questions. What's the limit of the secant function as x goes to pi over 2 from the left side of pi over 2? So, uh, everyone is done uh, drawing this, sketching this? You guys are done sketching this? Okay, let's answer a couple of questions now. Uh, what's the limit as x going to pi over 2 from uh, from the uh, uh, pi over 2 from the did I answer that? let's say from the right side of the secant of, secant of x what is this limit? Yeah, so you, all I have to do is look at my graph here. I see that when x is close to pi over 2, uh, when x is close to pi over 2, on the right side of pi over 2, secant is negative infinity. Is that making sense? What's the limit as x going to pi over 2 from the left side of pi over 2 of secant x? That's positive infinity. Um, and you can answer other questions as well, right? What's the limit at uh, what's the limit at pi? What's the limit of secant at pi? What's the limit of secant at pi? Was that the limit of secant at pi? Negative one, right? Okay, so yeah, from both sides, yes. So the limit is x going to pi of secant x is negative one. You guys can handle limits involving trig functions, okay? Now, how would you sketch the graph of cosecant, you think? Yeah, except that you're going to now work with the graph of sine, right? The graph of C, uh, the graph of uh, cosecant, 
and let me just show you one one step there the cosecant, see wherever sine is zero wherever sine is zero cosecant will have a vertical asymptote okay so the graph of uh, the graph of cosecant will be this blue curve okay this blue curve will be the graph of cosecant right because a cosecant is one over sine so wherever sine is zero cosecant will blow up okay so I'll let you draw the graph of cosecant yourself uh, the graph of these functions are also given in the back of your book uh, textbook uh, which is appendix D okay so now uh, so uh, the one more thing that I, we need is the graph of tangent okay what's the graph of tangent um, yeah whoops are we are we looking at so cosecant or It's, it's really important that these pictures that I'm giving you, when you go to calculus too, right, they have to be in your head. Okay? Uh, believe me or not, because you're going to be talking about inverse trig functions. And there, when you go there, you have to know the graph of inverse cosine, inverse sine, inverse tangent, inverse secant, okay? So many graphs. So you better memorize these graphs right now, okay? It's, it's really... Uh, a, a, it's going to make your life easier if you just remember these graphs, okay, instead of trying to come up with them, okay. Okay. Um, you guys feel like you need a break right now? Okay, let me, let me finish the tangent and then I'll give you five minutes, okay. So here's the graph of uh, t uh, tangent. Uh, okay, um, let's say uh, this is where no, I'm not going to be that much precise now. This is let's say this is pi over two. Uh, this is pi then, this is 3 pi over 2 then, and this is 2 pi then, right? And in the negative direction I have about the same distance, is it? Negative, negative pi over 2, um, uh, negative pi, and negative 3 pi over 2 and negative 2 pi. Okay. Um, okay, now remember what is, what is tangent. Tangent of x is the same as sine x divided by cosine x. Okay. Now, one thing you need to realize is that sine x and cosine x will never be zero at the same time. <coughs> Why? Because sine is zero whenever the, ang the terminal side is on the y-axis. Sorry, well, whenever the terminal side is on the x-axis. And cosine is zero whenever the terminal side is on the y-axis. So they cannot be zero at the same time. Now, when will tangent, tangent be zero? Well, the tangent will be zero whenever sine is zero, right? Because sine is on the numerator. Tangent is zero whenever sine is zero. So tangent is zero when sine is uh, zero, right? Right here. Another thing that you want to notice, so tangent will be zero at multiples of pi. Whenever you have a multiple of pi, tangent will be, will be zero. Now, you have cosine in the denominator, right? So cosine could be zero, right? When is cosine zero? Cosine is zero at pi over two, right? 
And so the value of tangent will have, so the tangent graph will have a vertical asymptote at pi over 2. Okay? Same thing ha happens at negative pi over 2. So let me draw that. So I'm going to first look at what's happening between between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, okay? Um, so let's investigate. When x is close to pi over 2, on the left side of pi over 2, uh, the cosine x is close to 0, but it is positive, right? You have pi over 2, and when x is going to pi over 2, the cosine x is positive, but, it, but it's close to 0. So the fraction will blow up, okay? So that means the graph looks like this. That the graph, oops, uh, how do I make it nicer, I guess? Uh, like this, and then when x is close to negative pi over 2, okay, negative pi over 2 from the uh, from the right side of negative pi over 2. So think about negative pi over 2 is like, here's the circle and negative, uh, here's the x-axis, negative pi over 2 is here, right? So there, uh, cosine, uh, the, uh, uh, cosine, uh, cosine of those are positive, right? Because when x is, when x is close to negative pi over 2, uh, on the right side of negative pi over 2, it, it means the angle is in the fourth quadrant. So cosine x is positive and close to zero. However, sine is now negative, right? So that's why you're getting negative infinity here. Okay, so that's how the graph looks like between, uh, between uh, pi over two and negative pi over two and pi over two. Now what's happening beyond that? Well, the same thing, same thing is going to repeat, okay? So for example, um, uh, this is pi over, Two and this is this is where you have three pi over two, so this is where you have three pi over two. Uh, this is where you have pi over two. So okay, so here is uh, here is uh, this is where pi. Okay, this is pi and this is three pi over two. So what's happening between pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2? Well, same thing. Uh, you, you are going to go like this, and then you're going to go like this. Am I making sense? The same thing happens between pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Everybody is OK. Making sense? And again, what's happening beyond that, and so on. Uh, in calculus two, it's important to know the graph of tangent between negative pi over two and positive pi over two. If you know that, most of the time, that's enough. Okay, but you should know in general how the graph of tangent looks like. Everybody's okay. All right. So when you go to calculus two, you can't say that your instructor didn't talk about the graph of tangent. Well, even if you say that, there is no excuse because you're supposed to know it from uh, high school. Okay. Uh, now, somebody tell me what's the limit as, as x going to pi over 2 from the right side of pi over 2 of tangent of x. Yeah, from the right side it's negative infinity and from the left side It's part of, I have to write tangent. Positive infinity. Okay, I think.